Hello there. Well, you know, I'm crazy about early electric pickups for playing gramophone records, phonograph records, and I've just come across one that's really interesting. I promise you it is. Um, it was made by a company called S.G. Brown, um, 1903, established in London, made all sorts of stuff to do with uh, radio, scientific apparatus, relays, and all that kind of thing, and um, they actually did very well in gyro compasses, and that's most ordinary people don't need a gyro compass, so um, <clears throat> we don't know much about that. Uh, but we do know that they made headphones, they made all kinds of wound components, relays. And in 1927, they came up with their first um, electrical pickup to play in records. And it's um, quite conventional. It's got uh, the needle goes in there, there's an armature uh, which connects a uh, horseshoe magnet going around the back and two coils. And it, the vibration in between the magnetic uh, poles. Uh, induced a small voltage in the coils which was taken out from the terminals on the top and connected into your radio set usually um, and it, it's got a thing here to go into the tone arm of the gramophone uh, to replace the acoustic sound box so it played tangentially and this is the one I think that was reviewed in the gramophone magazine in 1927 now um, later there's another model which is uh, very similar, again uh, tangential, a horseshoe magnet at the back, armature, etc, etc, two coils, two internals on the top. Um, I think that must be a bit later, 1928, 29, perhaps 30. Um, but they then must have said, I conjecture, um, well yes this is all very well but let's do something really different. Um, and that's the pickup we're going to look at. This early electric pickup um, is one of the most fascinating that I've ever come across. It's made by Brown, that's SG Brown of London, the company started in 1903, and they made some moving iron magnetic pickups. Um, from 1927 onwards which were favourably reviewed and they were conventional in their structure but here we've got something completely different uh, it's also later and the reason we know it's later is because if you look at it from the top this is where the arm went and you can see it's at an angle and that means that this pickup has an offset so if the arm went straight up there the pickup would be at an angle uh, something like that an angle facing inwards and of course the offset is still with us um, but it, the offset was only really uh, developed about 1930 so this probably is from the early 30s um, and um, the reason I'm making this insert is because I'm going to um, it's got three wires I know, I know there's only two here but one of them's broken off uh, and they're both in, in, in pretty poor shape. I mean the uh, you know the rubber is not in very good condition. <laughs> okay so um, I'm making this video so that if I mess this thing up uh, when I try to put some new wires in uh, there will be a record of what it was like before I started to have my way with it and the, I've taken the screws out and there's the front. The back has got these strange um, vents or slots here and we can take the back off and you can see that the thing is essentially there's the needle and an armature which goes up to a little point in the middle of this brass uh, container and of course it's a um, carbon granule pickup this uh, cell here in the middle of these two brass plates is full of carbon granules and if you take this off, which I did carefully, it's full. Um, so uh, it's a carbon granule pickup and I don't think there are many of them. Uh, the dismantling process, I've taken these screws out which I believe uh, which came from here and I think they hold this cell on. But there's also a couple of 
grub screws which act as a pivot to the um, the needle holder, the bottom of the armature, so they need to come out as well. Right, perhaps not entirely out, but they need to be slackened off at least. I'm going to cut the wires rather than attempt to unsolder them in situ and fortunately they're all black so we don't have to go through the agonizing procedure of which colour wire we cut first and hopefully now the cell will come off. Well it's going to be difficult to keep this video short. I've unsoldered this braid from the connector there so that we can take off the housing and we're left with the capsule itself which has a number of very interesting features uh, but first uh, the grub screws that fit in here and on the other side in the housing which I thought was a pivot it's not um, they're little rubber buffers I'm afraid they're perished now but they were the damping for the armature which is this the pivot of the armature is across there and this was damped the needle holder was damped on either side by the rubber buffers held in by the grub screws so that's that's very unusual to find the damping below the the, uh, the pivot um, but more than that if I can hold it so that you can see this pivot is pivoted by a sort of hybrid of, of two points and two screws which is amazing the um, delicate and, and, and super and that, that of course is what SG Brown did they made stuff like this um, and then lastly in this long scene this is one connector connection is made to this face the other connection is made to that face they're insulated from this by these two gaskets um, so the, the, clearly the the energising potential is applied between these two faces and then this uh, here the point at which the vibrations enter the capsule is insulated by a sort of uh, cloth a fabric which it can be just be seen I think um, so we've got the three connections and you would take the signal from this braid and whichever of these two were uh, was convenient or proper to do so so uh, all in all um, uh, you know a marvellous little piece of kit we've replaced the wires um, we've got um, a red wire and a black wire going to the two faces of the capsule which I presume will energize it uh, then there's a grey wire which comes through to the front and is connected we've just soldered on the delicate uh, braid there so we just need to uh, screw up the um, damping um, screws okay so we've got all the wires and uh, so now comes the moment of truth well we've uh, wired it up we've got this uh, birds birds nest here uh, but essentially the uh, black and uh, red wires from the pickup go to a single uh, NIMH cell which is about um, 1.2 volts isn't it 1.3 um, and then all we need to do is and then uh, the output goes into this uh, which goes into the traditional nearby audio amplifier so all we need to do is connect this which is the negative supply to the negative of the battery and um, here we go oh rustly um, Wow, well, look. It's alive! It's alive! Well, it, it does work, I'll show it you, but um, there's some distortion present. But uh, I think I know why that is, but let's just fire it up. Uh, there's the wiring going in and we've lashed it with just with tape onto this old arm. There we are, and it's running on a... Um, an old record deck appropriately enough and this record is a late Charleston Chasers which I very much like so we'll just uh, play a bit of it
Well, it's it's working. Honor is satisfied, but the, we wouldn't want a whole side that distorted. But uh, however nice the music is, um, and the fault lies here. These little nuts. There is actually a pair of them, a nut and a lock nut. They're about ten ba, and uh, they are what holds it in place on those pointy pivots we saw uh, before. Um, and in between the lock nut and the uh, the armature, there are two tiny washers. Well, we'll have to leave it there, but um, it did work, and um, you know I couldn't make such tiny washers. 10 ba is is really little. Um, what's happened is, of course, uh, I screwed up the pivots to try and uh, it was rattling, I think, so I tried to screw it up because the washers, which were petrified, just turned to dust. And if you screwed it up tighter, it just made it rigid, so it wouldn't move at all, and there was no sound. So uh, it requires some very, very thin, tiny washers. Um, so there we are. I'll play you out with um, a bit of the uh, nice record um, as it should be heard. Bye now. Before your smile, I told you how I'm feeling. If you're feeling the same way too, baby, now's the time. Say you're glad that I'm loving you the way I do.